So let's let's go on to the phone lines now and speak with Cole Emisa. He is a political science uh, lecturer with the University of Cape Coast. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you very much for joining us. Good afternoon. Uh, um, w there are those who are saying that manifestos really may not necessarily win you votes, but then we, we also understand that there is a section of Ghanaians who take these things, these documents, quite seriously. Look, judging from what the NPP did yesterday, how do you think it can influence their votes going into the 2016 elections? Thank you very much for, for the opportunity. Uh, let me wish, uh, let me greet uh, uh, your cherished listening. Yes, it is, it is the case that manifestos play a very important role in, in election. Um, in this case, when you look at the, the demography of Ghana now, we are the class, class group, and this the class group are more or less on on the group. Mm. <laughs> if we look at if we if we look at the most that both the percentage that they always get. For instance, the MPP the MPP has it approximately forty percent. The NDC has it approximately forty percent. But you realize that there are certain number of voters who um until until the time of the polls they are very much undecided and these right. people are ones who very much depend on um, issues based on their on based on manifestos and policy directives of of the parties in order to decide so manifestos are very much important and important. that is why that is why when the major parties have not um, you know um, launched their manifestos mm. some of us were some of us were you know were, were getting worried because we thought that it is it is it was it was very late for them to to be you know to be holding on to their manifestos because right. it will but uh, mr mr emisa the decision of who holds the right to a manifesto or a promise has come up for discussion several in the last few months. The NDC has similar campaign promises to that of the NPP, and some manifesto promises in the NPP's 2012 manifesto seem to have been implemented by the current government, which is an NDC government. So if this or their um, uh, manifesto has been plagiarized or ideas copied, well, um, I would say that for, for manifestos, no party can claim that they can have an exclusive manifesto where the issues are exclusive from the ones that other parties will have. Indeed, we are all facing the same problem. Problems of energy crisis, it is, it is, it is, it is across the country. We, all face, we are all facing infrastructure problems, education problems, and all that. And these are, these are the basic problems. And so the solutions that will be proposed in the manifesto will, by all means, um, at a point, converge. And that should, for me, I think that it should rather be a good thing that, that certain, certain approaches at solving certain issues in the country have found their way into, into both, both the NDC manifesto and the NPP manifesto. So the issue of plagiarizing manifesto for me shouldn't arise uh, arise at all unless unless you would want to say that those parties do not actually have enough you know enough policies to mm. let us know because um, in Ghana we don't have a problem with policy design we only have a problem with policy implementation, implementation. and once and once we know we know the problem we know the problem that we are facing policy design towards it it shouldn't be a problem for 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 people seeking our power to so it, you know. it 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 will be completely absurd for any political party to say that their idea has been stolen and for that they are going to court to sue the so-called party that has stolen their idea Com completely absurd it shouldn't it shouldn't arise it shouldn't arise in the first place ideas ideas are not exclusive to any human being right. ideas 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 run through and ideas come as a result of problems so if mm. we have a common problem it is it is it is it is in the it is in the right direction for us to have a common solution and right. in having the common solution the the differences is about the approach but the difference the the difference cannot always be about the proposal for solving the solution it can mm -hmm. be the approach at solving it for instance if 
if we take um, 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 the health the health sector the health sector of the country right. and 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 we decide that we would want to make it affordable affordable to the ordinary Ghanaian. it is the approach that we will take at solving health health sector issue that okay. that can differ from from party to party one party okay. can say the government can only give subsidy of 50 percent to the ordinary Ghanaian. one party can say no we can give 70 percent and okay. and and in the end it is all just towards solving or making health health affordable for the ordinary Ghanaian. Right. But we cannot we cannot say that the proposal to solve that solution must always be an exclusive right of one party. One that party. one is okay. very much absurd. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your input and your thoughts on this particular story and issue. Echo Emisa is a political science uh, lecturer at the University of Cape Coast UCC.